Don't forget to like and subscribe. See more on my YouTube at Rodney Publishing. This is Brainboxing, The Girl Next Door, the third story on page 15. We moved in summer. Big old house, too big for us. I noticed her on the second day. She sat on the porch next door, just watching. She never smiled. Her eyes followed me, cold, piercing, like a winter sky. I felt a shiver, even in the heat. There was something strange about her, something not quite right. Her skin was pale, almost translucent, like moonlight on snow. Her hair was long and black, like a raven's wing. She wore a white dress, simple, but elegant, out of place. I tried to talk to her, just a friendly hello, but she wouldn't answer. She just stared right through me, like I wasn't even there. Days turned into weeks. The girl was always there, on that swing, watching, waiting. I never saw her leave, not once. One day, I gathered my courage. I walked to her porch. My heart pounded in my chest. But when I reached the swing, it was empty. She was gone. That night, I couldn't sleep. The wind howled outside my window, and then I heard it. Music, a haunting melody drifting from next door. It was a music box, a simple childlike tune. But there was something off about it, something unsettling. It played on and on, until dawn broke. The next morning, the music box was silent. I looked toward her house, and there she was, back on the swing, watching me, as if nothing had happened. Her gaze met mine, and this time she smiled. It wasn't a friendly smile, it was cold, predatory, like a wolf baring its teeth. Later that day, I found something on my porch. A small, wooden music box, identical to the one I heard the night before. I knew it was from her, a gift, or maybe a warning. I tried to throw it away, but it always found its way back to me, as if it had a life of its own. Section 7 the unveiling. I couldn't ignore her anymore. I had to know her secret. That night I crept out of my house, drawn to hers like a moth to a flame. The porch was cold beneath my feet. The swing creaked in the wind, but the girl was gone. I turned the doorknob. The door creaked open as if inviting me inside. Section eight, the screaming wind. The house was dark and silent. Dust covered everything. It was like stepping into a tomb. And then I heard it again, the music box. But this time it was louder, more insistent, and the wind outside. It wasn't howling, it was screaming. Section 9. Gone but not forgotten. I followed the music, up the stairs. Each step creaked in protest. The music led me to a small attic room. The door was slightly ajar. I pushed it open. The music box sat on a dusty table. It played its haunting melody, but the girl was gone, vanished, as if she were never there at all. Section 10, the final note. I reached for the music box, my fingers brushed against the cold metal, and then everything went black. The music box played on, its haunting melody echoing in the empty house, a constant reminder that some mysteries are best left unsolved and some doors are better left unopened. Share with your friends on YouTube at Rodney Publishing, where you can find more story voiceovers like this. Thank you for your time.